Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Ruchim Habayim. I am Pastor Victor Rodriguez Priones, all the way here from the Far East Asia, Philippines. Greeting each and every one of you. Shabbat Shalom. Now we are so blessed by Hashem for giving us another week's Torah parasha. And this week's Torah parasha is something very glorious, very mysterious, very messianic in its truest sense. Why? Because the Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, who is the Messiah of Israel, is revealed from this portion of Torah HaKedusha. I would like to commend each and every one of you who had been following these uh, video teachings. You have no clue that the elevation, the ascension, the maturing of your neshama, your soul, is reaching to its highest and highest level. As the apostle Paul, Rabbi Shaul said, as we will reach the fullness of our faith, as we reach to the full maturity of the stature of the fullness of Messiah's perfection, what God has planned for us in order to have that, that uh, perfect faith, that perfect faith up to the appearing or the coming of our Messiah, Yeshua, which is going to be soon and very soon. Please continue with such a passion in receiving the week's Torah portion. Why? Because you will know who is Yeshua from the Torah HaKedushah. Because the Bible says, in the book of Messianic Jews, that is Hebrews, a.k.a. Hebrews, it says Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Messianic Jews or Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And all of us in the Messianic community, all around the nations of the world, especially in Eretz HaKodesh, Israel, all of us believers of Messiah Yeshua, we say Amen ve Amen to, me, to Hebrews or Messianic Jews, chapter 13, verse 8. And because we say Amen ve Amen to the chapter 13, verse 8, we know what we are agreeing. We know what we are, we are saying Amen to. It is Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday. Yesterday means from the time of creation. He is already there. From the time of Adam Akhava, he is already there. From the time of the Mabul, the flood of Noah, he is already there. From the time of Abraham Avinu, he is already there. From the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, he is already there. As a matter of fact, he is not just there. He is very much in full control. He is the Davar. He is the word of God. He is the Torah of Hashem. The Torah is not the law. I always beg to, to disagree to many Gentile theologians who keep on saying that the Torah is the law. It is not the law. I beg to disagree a million times over and over again. Why? Because the Torah is a Hebrew word. It came from two Hebrew root words, hora'ah. The meaning of hora'ah is the instructions for life. It is the instructional manual of any and every soul who wants to walk in Derech Hashem. The Rech Hashem means the way of Hashem. And the next word of Torah came from the root word Yara. Yara means the direction, the signage. It points to where we ought to go. 
So it is very, very important for each and everyone to understand that the Torah is the instructions for life. If we need some instructions with regards to our marriage, we go to the Torah. The Torah gives us the instructions for a well-pleasing, acceptable, before the sight of God, how we are going to treat our spouse. With regards to parenting, we go to the Torah. The Torah gives us the proper instruction how we are supposed to treat our children. We say it always that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. But the first commandment says is in the Torah. It says, et Adonai Elohecha, Vekol Levavka, Vekol Navshecha, Vekol Meodecha. It means you are to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your resources. You are to teach the word of God diligently to your children. To your children, when you walk by the way, when you sit down, when you lie down, always teach the word of God, which is the Torah, the instructions for life, as little as they are. God is commanding our, the parents to cheat, to teach the children. Not any Gentile way, not going to seminars of Gentile theologians. I don't say any negative about that, but the word of God is very clear as crystal and explicit that the way to guide our children is through the Torah, the holy Torah of Hashem. When we are dealing with our business, if you are engaged in some kind of business or ownership of company or whatsoever, or you are an employee, where do we seek guidance from Hashem? From the Torah. The way to be honest, the way to be well-pleasing before God, how to treat our bosses, how, are, how to treat our supervisors. If you are the boss, if you are the manager, what are you gonna do? What are the instructions for your life that you are going to be well-pleasing and acceptable before God? in the marketplace, in the workplace, in whatever kind of circumstance or situation that you may be in, where do we get the guidance for life? Where do we get the direction where we are supposed to tread our path and be pleasing before God? It is through the Torah HaKedusha. I gave an explicit example. If you are planning to be an engineer, if you want to be an engineer, whether it may be a mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, chemical engineer, or electronics engineer, or whatever kind of engineering course that you want to enter into, for five years you are going to study, right? You're, and then after study, you are not yet an engineer. You have to pass the board examination. So when you pass the board examination, then Baruch Hashem, Mazel Tov, you are going to be called a licensed professional engineer of whatever field that you entered into. Now you practice being an engineer. You enter into a company or whether you enter into an engineering uh, work or a, a site up the mountain and you deal with, with power or geothermal or chemicals or mining or what kind of endeavor that, you, that your profession is needed. So you go there as an engineer, you work with your fellow engineers. But the moment you, you encounter some problem in in your workplace and you don't know the answer in order to in order to solve that problem my question is this what are you going to be doing 
in order to solve that problem. You are going to go back to your fifth year or fourth year or third year, the major, the major years of your engineering course and grab the book that will answer and, and address to the problem. You will never in the right sense of mind go to a nursing book or a medical book or an architectural book. Why? Because it is nonsensical. There is nothing to do with any answer that you may be looking for because you are an engineer. You go back to the books from where you studied your engineering course. Are you getting something, my friend? So the answer is there. What am I trying to say? What am I driving across? The Bible says that the aim of the Torah is Yeshua the Messiah. It is not true, the translation, the end of the law is Christ. That is wrong translation. That is a wrong translation from the biases of the Gentile translations of the versions of the Bible. You should know that as early as possible time. The true translation of the word from Apostle Paul from the book of Romans, it is not the end of the law is Christ. No, the Torah, the, the aim of the Torah or the goal of the Torah is Messiah Yeshua. Now, the father revealed his son. Who is his son? Yeshua, the Messiah. We came to know the savior of the world the one and only savior of the world, because there is no other name given under heaven wherein man can be saved. It's only the name of Yeshua of Nazareth, Yeshua of Nazareth. And we, when we surrender our life, our soul, our body, our whole being to the Lordship, Lord, Lordship means the ownership of Yeshua the Messiah, and we have this faith or emuna and trust of his redemptive work that he died on that execution stake. He bled to death for the forgiveness of your sin and my sin. And he was buried. But on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And now he ascended, he ascended up on high and seated at the right hand of the Father. Right hand means he is the righteousness of the Father God in heaven. There is no other righteousness of the Father God except his son, Yeshua, the Messiah. So because of Yeshua, the Messiah, who became our Lord and Savior, we are now righteous before God through our Lord, Yeshua, the Messiah. Okay, we are now born again, born afresh by the Spirit of Hashem through our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. Now the question is, now that we are now new in Messiah, we are now united with Messiah, Baruch Hashem, amen to that, I believe you, but are you gonna be dead already? Will you die today or tomorrow? Heaven forbid, life goes on. You continue to live, you continue to, to live in the ways of Hashem. So now my question is this, how are you gonna be dealing with your daily life? How are you gonna be dealing with your wife? How are you gonna be dealing with your husband? How are you gonna be dealing with your siblings? How are you gonna be dealing with your, with your children? How are you gonna be dealing with your workplace, with your bosses, with your supervisors? If you are the manager, if you are the CEO, how are you supposed to behave as a believer of Messiah Yeshua? How are you gonna worship God in the true sense of worship? When are you gonna worship God? The when is the true day of worship? Where are we gonna get those answers while we are still alive as believers of Yeshua the Messiah? The answer is we go to the Torah HaKedusha. As an engineer, we need some answers to, to the project 
as an engineer, we go back to the engineering book of fifth year college, fourth year college, third year college. If we want to get the strength of the of the of the of the steel, we go to the to the to the book about getting the tensile strength of the of the steel. We do not go to a nursing book. We don't go to a medical book. What I mean to say, we don't go to a Gentile theologian who know nothing about the Torah, especially the Hebrew scripture of the Torah. I hope I made myself very clear. We need the Torah as Yeshua the Messiah. I did not come to abolish the Torah or the writings of the prophets or the writings, but I came in order to fulfill it. Now Yeshua the Messiah is the firstborn. He is the firstborn amongst us. He is the last Adam. He gave us an example. He opened the door. He opened heavens for us. We have now access to the Father through Yeshua the Messiah. So because he has already fulfilled it, we, our fellow believers in Israel or from the nations of the world who are grafted in to the house of Israel have now the ability power to obey the Torah Kedushah. We cheerfully obey the commandments of Hashem. As Yeshua the Messiah had clearly said in John 14 verse 15, that if you love me, what are you going to do? If you love me, what are you going to do? Yeshua said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And verse 21 said, he who obeys my commandment, referring to the Torah, him will my father honor. Matthew 7, not all those who call me Lord, Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Even if you are a leader or a pastor or a bishop, it doesn't make any sense. Because Yeshua said, only those who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What is the will of the Father? His word. What is his word? The instructions for life. What is the instructions for life? The Torah, Hedusha, the Holy Torah. Do you understand, my dear friend? Do you understand? Do you know? Who is the tutor of Moses? The tutor of Moses who gave the Holy Torah is no one but Yeshua, the Messiah. Because he is the same yesterday and today and forever. My goodness gracious. If you get that, my friend, it is more than winning a lottery ticket. If I will ask you with all love from my heart and with genuine spirit of humility for the glory of God, if I will ask you, can you share? Can you share the Lord and Savior Yeshua, the Messiah, not using the new covenant scripture, not using the New Testament scripture? If you truly believe that Yeshua, the Messiah is the same yesterday, can you share the good news, the gospel? of Yeshua the Messiah using the first five books of the Bible, which is Breshit, Shmot, Vayikra, Bamidbar, and Devarim, or Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Can you use the first five books? Because Jesus Christ, the real name is Yeshua the Messiah, is not was is he lives and he lives forever is the same yesterday he is the same yesterday 
He is the tutor of Moses. He was the one who gave the word of God up there in Mount Sinai. That is why the name Moshe is spelled with a mem, shin, hey. That is Mashiach. Listen to me very careful. This is very deep and powerful. Moshe, mem, shin, hey. The meaning of those three letters, the Hebrew letters, mem, shin, hey, is Mashiach, sar, hapanim. What does it mean? Messiah, prince of his continents. The face of the father is the Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. What is the scriptural reference? Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. And I quote, let the light, God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And God commanded that light to shine out of darkness, to give the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Yeshua the Messiah. What is the face of the Father God? It is Yeshua the Messiah. In the book of Hebrews, Yeshua the Messiah is the very essence, the very etchem of God himself. He is the very radiance of the Father, Yeshua the Messiah. He is the living Torah. He is the walking Torah. He is the talking Torah. He is the word of God. And he is the word that became flesh and tabernacled amongst us. As we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And everybody said, Amen, ve Amen, ve Amen to that, my friends. I will digress. That is not my topic. I just cannot escape the prompting of the Ruach HaKodesh in me because so many of my listeners from Kenya, Ruhim Habayim, welcome, my dear brothers in Kenya, in Nigeria, welcome to the study of the Torah portion this week, from the brothers from Ghana, welcome, from the brothers in South, Southern Africa, welcome, from the brothers there in Papua New Guinea, welcome, in Trinidad Tobago, welcome, to those brothers in in the Caribbean, welcome to those brothers and sisters in the United States of America, welcome. Welcome, may you all be blessed with this very simple teaching that came from the unadulterated words of God, where Yeshua the Messiah said, if you believe in Moses, then you believe me. Because what Moses is spoke about are all about me. What are those writings of Moses that he spoke about Yeshua as Yeshua the Messiah claimed? All the writings of Moses are pointing to him. The first five books, the author was Moshe Rabbeinu. But if you do not believe Moses, then how can you believe me? I'm just quoting John 5 verses 40, John 5 verses 46 there about. How can we understand the words of the Lord in the Brit Hakadosh or in the New Covenant if we do not know the very bedrock, the very the very blueprint of his word way back there from the time of Moses. He was the one who tutored Moses. He is the living word. He is the Torah. Do you get this, my friend? 
And if you get this, you will see the Lord and Savior Yeshua, the Messiah, all scattered from the pages of Scripture. Scripture means Tanakh. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, and I quote, Apostle Paul, Rab Shaul, Rabbi Shaul said, all scripture is God brief or all scripture, that all scripture referring to the Tanakh, which the Gentile theologian calls it as Old Testament. But the word of God never been old. So that is a wrong translation again. All scripture is inspired by God. All is scripture is God breathed. And it is used for teaching, for correction, for discipline, for training for righteousness. That we are supposed to be equipped that we are supposed to grow into the full maturity of the full stature of Christ's perfection and God's plan for us. That we will be no longer as children tossed to and fro. That whenever trials and testings come along, we are going to be offended. We cry like babies. We no, no longer drink milk. Because milk are for babies and infants. We now eat meat. And those meat are from the Torah and the Shah. Because it all points to our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. All the words of the New Testament. The words of the Brit HaKadoshah. The words of the writings of the prophets. Namely, Apostle Paul, Apostle John, Apostle Peter. Apostle Yaakov, Apostle Jude, up to the book of Revelation, hit Galut. All of the word of those apostles from the New Testament are all anchored in the Torah Hedushah. The words in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all anchored in the Torah Hedushah. The words of the prophets, namely Yeshayahu, Ezek, Yermiao, Yecheskel, Havakok, Amos, Hosea, and the rest of the prophets are all anchored from the Torah, Hakedusha. The writings, the writings of the Tanakh, the Ketuvim, are all grounded and anchored. From the Torah, Akedusha. My goodness, my friend. The reason why yours truly is here. I receive a clear mandate from the Lord. Among so many, so many rabbis and pastors and teachers. To bring the Torah to the nations of the world. Presenting Yeshua the Messiah through the Torah HaKedushah. That is the mandate, fulfilling the prophecy from the book of Isaiah Yeshayahu. From out of Zion, the words of the Lord, the Torah, will come forth from Yerushalayim. Now scripture is being fulfilled. So many nations from different parts of the world are now embracing Torah Hedusha, learning about the true day of worship is not a Sunday pagan origin day of worship. It is Holy Shabbat day. And it is the seventh day, which is named Holy Shabbat day. The appointed face of Hashem are all in the Torah. All the goodness of Hashem are all in the Torah. Who spoke the words of God? Hashem, Adonai, the Father God directly 
spoke his words from the Torah, Akedusha. I'll stop from now because I will never end my introduction because of the wonders and the treasures of God all found in the Torah Hedusha. Now let's move on with the aid of the PowerPoint. Today is the holy day of Shabbat, the 9th of Kishlev 5783, and it is the 3rd of December. Time flies so quickly. We are still during the, the month of Kishlev, the 9th of Kishlev today, December 22, or December 3, 2022. And this week's Torah parasha is Parashat Vayetse. And the title of my drash or shiur is Sulam Yaakov or Yaakov's Ladder. It is one of the most mysterious, mysterious, secret, very highly kept by God, the secrets of God, the mysteries of God, is the Sulam Yaakov, or Yaakov's Ladder or some calls it in the Gentile world, Jacob's Ladder. In Gratia chapter 28, verse 10, it says, Vayetse Yaakov, Iber Shava, Vayelech Ha-Haran, Ha-Harana, I'm sorry. In English, and Yaakov left Be'er Shava, and went to Haran. In Hebrew, Vayetse, Vayetse Yaakov, Miber Shava, Vayelech Harana. The original Hebrew scripture is very deep. So let us use the original mother tongue, the Hebrew scripture. Why did it say? Vayetse means left or departed. Yaakov departed from his place, Be'er Sheba. And then he said, Vayelech Harana. And he went to Haran. Why does it say Harana? We will learn about that in a few minutes. Yaakov left Beersheba. What is there in Beersheba? He departed or he left his parents' domain. He left his spiritual security, which is Eretz HaKodesh, the Holy Land, and went downhill instead of uphill, instead of Aliyah, instead of a, a, an ascending direction going to the Holy Land of Israel, he was from the Holy Land. He was from the Er Sheba, but he was going on an opposite downhill direction. This is kind of negative. He went downhill in opposite direction of Aliyah, where he came from. That is why the title of this parasha is Vayetse, Departed. And when did that happen? He departed Be'er Sheva during Erev Pesach. Would you imagine that? The occasion when he is supposed to celebrate with his family, where he, is, where he used to bask the glorious presence of Hashem, he left. He left his place of security. He, he left his parents' domain. He, 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 was, he was feeling so condemned. He felt so 
guilty because of what he has done against his own brother, Asaph. But it wasn't his fault. It was out of his obedience from his mother, Rivka, who gave him that advice to get the blessing from their father, Itzkach, for Asaph not to receive the blessing. So when Yaakov left, his absence was felt. When you know somebody, especially a tzaddik or a righteous man who, who stayed in your house, for example, or who stayed in your community, he, he stayed in, in your place. And then he vayetse, he left or he departed, his absence will surely be felt, right? His absence was felt. His absence created a void of peace and strength. It is very important for us to know that there is a sense of loss of great value whenever a tzaddik leaves a place. For example, we are in this Jewish heart and soul messianic community, and we have been used to fellowshipping together, learning Torah Kedusha, keeping the holy day of Shabbat together, basking in the glorious presence of Hashem together every Shabbat, and then suddenly a righteous vayetse, a righteous departs, or a righteous man lives. Certainly we will feel his absence absence of void of peace and strength will be felt. There was a sense, there will be a sense of loss of great value when a tzaddik left a sense of strength and security. His absence created a, a sense of void of the glow and emptiness among the people in that place where he came from. It, it left a sense of luck, a sense of gloom and emptiness and sadness will be felt due to the tzaddik's absence. Vayetse Yaakov Beersheva Vayelech Harana. When a tzaddik is present, when a righteous man is present, for example, in a Shabbat gathering or in a yeshiva of Torah learning, a school of Torah learning, there is the presence of shalom. There is the presence of glowing light, the presence of radiance, a sweet demeanor of that tzaddik, a righteous man or a righteous woman. There is a sense of strength and there is a sense of security. You feel secured because of the presence of a tzaddik or a tzaddikim for that matter. There is an atmosphere of, of that security, an atmosphere of shalom in that place when the tzaddik is present. But the moment a tzaddik lives, he vayetse, he departs, that atmosphere is no longer the same. Do you get my point, my friends? Due to the absence of that tzaddik, that kind of indelible impact or imprint or impression is gone. That is our mission statement as believers united with the Lord and Savior, Yeshua. We are supposed to be lights and souls of the earth. We are supposed to be witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. 
the moment we leave a place, that place will no longer be the same again. That kind of indelible impression and, or impact or imprint of our mission to wherever we sojourn or travel is very powerful. I hope you realize that. But if nobody noticed that you left, or if your absence made no difference, if nobody noticed that you're gone, if nobody noticed that you have been there, if nobody noticed that you exist, then what can contribution do we give in the plan of God? We don't make any contribution in the tekunim process or in the process of rectification. Because our lives produce tikunim because of our presence. Even as lowly we are, we pray intensively in our prayer closets. We meditate on every week's Torah portion. We keep the Shabbat holy 24 hours. There is a created impact, an impression of the glowing radiance of God through our lives. That is why Yeshua said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But if nobody noticed that you, you left or you are gone, but if nobody noticed that you exist, there must be a big problem. If people will say, oh, did he left? Did, did he leave? Is, is he really gone? Oh, I didn't notice that. But if people will say, where is he? Where is she? Why am I feeling gloomy? Why, why am I feeling a sense of luck? Why am I feeling some sense of insecurity? There seemed to be a, a void. Where is he? Where did he go? Where is that supposed glowing witness that was created like an indelible impression or an impact or an imprint among his parents? Like in the case of Yaakov, he left his mother Rivka, he left his father Itzach. There was a void. The house and the domain of Itzach has never been the same again. He left his community, he left his neighborhood, he left his region, and he left the then known world of darkness. There's going to be no more righteous Yaakov to do the repairing, to do the, the, the tikkunim, because he left. Yaakov Avinu Vayetze Be'er Sheva going not on an uphill ascending fashion, but he went on an opposite downhill direction. He went to Haran. And do you know the meaning of Haran? It came from the root word haron, which means the wrath of God, the anger of God, haron. But the Bible says, Yaakov avinu vayetzer ver sheva vayelech harana. Why did it say haran? Why did it say harana? Because God has gone ahead of Yaakov to that place of his destination, Haran. God placed his name there. There is that letter He, like what God did in the name of Ram. He, add, he added a letter He and it became Avraham, Sarai. God added the letter He. 
because God added his presence to Abraham. He added his presence to Sarah. And he added his presence to Haran. It became Harana because God has a mighty plan for Yaakov Avinu. Why he is being sent to the place of the wrath of God filled with pagans, filled with idolatry, filled with Rashaim. Rashaim means wicked men, especially in the person of, of in the person of Lavan. Scripture says, God and his plan will always be upholded, whether we believe it or not, whether we are aware or not. God's plan for Yaakov is to make the tikkunim, the rectification for his own life and for the life of his twin elder brother, Asaph, because Asaph is not capable of making things right because Asaph is a material person. He is a wicked person. He care less about the things of God. What he care about are all the materialism and the worldliness. What is here and now, that is Asaph's heart. He never cared about the holy things of God. So because Yaakov is the spiritual man, he is an ish tom, a perfect man, an ish tzaddik, a dweller of tents, meaning to say he dwells in the presence of God, where he studies the Torah Hakedusha with his grandfather, Abraham Avinu, with his great, great, great grandfather, who is Eber and Shem in the yeshiva or school. He is the one tasked and mandated by God to make the tikkunim, the rectification as we are mandated by God to make the rectification for the things that was lost, the things that was damaged. We are commanded by God to make the tikkunim, the rectification, and make those wrong things that we have done in the past and others who have done in the past, make it right. Make it right. Yaakov's task involves two worlds to cross over. Two worlds. The spiritual world and the physical and material world. His task is make the tikkuni for himself, as I have said, and for Asaph's Harasha, his brother. Imagine Yaakov's devastated state. He was so condemned. He was so feeling guilty. When he vayetse, when he departed, when he left Beersheba from his father's or parents' domain, from the Shekinah glowing presence where he daily enjoy the presence of God, he vayetse, he departed, he left from the weekly Shabbat gathering. Can you imagine that? Where he used to enjoy together with his father and his mother, Rivka, and other brethren in his community. He left all of this great spiritual wealth and he found himself all alone going downhill to a place of Haran, the place of the wrath of God. He left the great Sadechim who were in his community. He left the Yeshiva Shem and Aver, the school of Shem and Aver, where he studied Torah Hedushah with his father Yitzchak Avinu and with, grand, with his grandfather Avraham Avinu and El Azar. Remember El Azar, the trustee 
of his grandfather, Avraham Avinu. And the other Sadiqim, he left all of these great brothers of his and he departed. His precious righteous mother left Rivka, who was the reason why Asa wanted to kill him because he stole the blessing intended for Asa, which came from the advice of his mother, Rivka. His mother, Rivka, was a very righteous woman of God. If you will study scripture, he left the holy place where he grew up as a Sadiq, as an Islam, as an Isadik who dwells in the tents of Torah and the Shekinah. Shekinah means the presence of Hashem. All his entire life, he left it. Carrying a heart of guilt and condemnation because what he has done against his brother. Knowing nothing about the plan of God. Now he feels all hope's gone. What is my life worth living for? Now the Holy Land is gone. I'm going to a place where the wicked man lives. Imagine that. But when he encountered the Makom, the Hamakom, which means the place, he had a dream, the dream of the Sulam Yaakov or the Yaakov's ladder or Jacob's ladder. And when did he have that dream? During Pesach, during Pesach night, during that dream, and in that dream, everything changed. In that dream, he saw a ladder, a sulam. And in that ladder, the malachim were ascending and descending. And in front of Yaakov Avinu is Hashem, our father. What is that great mystery that God showed Avram or Yaakov Avinu with his state of confusion, state of void of the presence of God? A state of hopelessness, a state of nothingness, because he left Eretz HaKodesh. He left his holy, righteous parents. He left the school of Shem and Aver. He left his fellow Tzadikim. He left the holy place where he grew up. He left the place where he, where he, they used to gather together with the brethren during Holy Shabbat, Holy Day of Shabbat. Now to find himself all alone, God showed him a sulam, a ladder. And in that sulam, he saw Hashem standing before him and the angels ascending and descending. It is not the other way around. It is not descending and ascending. Scripture says the Malachim were ascending. It means they came from the earth, not from the heavens, where Yaakov Avinu is dwelling. What is that mystery? Out of his state of nothingness and confusion, God is present. He is all present in any and every situation of all the people who put their trust and faith in Hashem. 
He is the creator of light and he is the creator of darkness. He is the creator of holiness and good and he is the creator of evil. That is what Isaiah the prophet says in chapter 45. Hashem is the creator of everything. He is ain odd milvado. He is ain soft. There's nothing but Hashem. And what does the ladder represent? What is the ladder? Or who is the ladder? May I just fast forward? It is a progress of revelation. The, ya the Yaakov's Sulam or the Sulam Yaakov or the ladder of Jacob has a progression of revelation. It came about that Sulam, the numerical value or the gematria of Sulam is exactly equivalent to the word Sinai. Sinai, Har Sinai, the Mount of God, Sinai. It is where Moshe Rabbeinu went up to the presence of Hashem and Yeshua the Messiah, the tutor of Moses, gave the Torah Chedusha to Moses. Where? Up there in the presence of Hashem in Mount Sinai. And when he went down, he gave the instructions for life to our brethren, the Jewish people, the Torah. So the progression of revelation about the Jacob's ladder or the Sulam Yaakov represents the Sulam equal to Sinai. And also it represents Moshe and the Mashiach of Israel. Who is Moshe? Moshe is the redeemer. He became a type of a redeemer of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt or Mitzrayim going to the Bamidbar or the wilderness, going to the Eretz HaKodesh or the promised land, but he wasn't able to enter into the promised land. The meaning of Moshe is Mem, Shin, He. And the meaning of Mem is Mashiach, Shin is Sar, Prince, He is Hapanim, the prince of his continents. The face of the father is the Mashiach. And who is the Mashiach? He is Yeshua, the Messiah, Adonai, our Lord and our Savior. That is why the Gematria of Moshe Chai, Moses is alive, Moses is dead, isn't it? Because he is man. But the M, the, the Mem, Shin, He, Chai, Moshe Chai, and the Gematria of Mashiach is exactly the same. It represents Messiah our Lord and Savior, the ladder that joins the two worlds, the world above, the spiritual world, where Messiah Yeshua came from. He was born from heaven. He, I'm sorry, he came from heaven. He did not come from earth. He came from heaven and with the, it was the right time that God has planned in that fullness of time, God sent his son born of a woman to live in tabernacle among us that we may behold the glory of the only begotten of the father that is the face of the Father. 
Yeshua the Messiah is the full radiance of the Father. He is the very essence of the Father. He is the holy walking, talking Torah. He is the Word of God. Hallelujah. That is why when, when Yaakov Avinu saw, Yaakov Avinu says, Anohi, Loya Dati, I do not know what this means. This is an awesome place. The presence of God is in this place. The Makom, the place that is exactly where Avraham Avinu, the grandfather of Yaakov Avinu, offered his son Itzkak Avinu before the father during that Akedat Itzkak, the binding of Isaac. There is where God's placed. Yaakov, exactly where the place where Abraham Avinu offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice, a burnt offering when he was tested. And those 12 stones are exactly the stones where Abraham Avinu laid his son on that altar and he tied his son. And when he's about to shek his son, the voice from heaven is said, do not harm your son. Now I know that you will not withhold anything from God. He passed the test. And because Abraham passed the test, willing, without any equivocation, without any reservation, he is willing to obey and Offer his one and only son, its cock before God because of his great and perfect faith in God. He passed a test, and because he passed a test, and because he is a covenant partner of God, it is now the time, it is now God who will do the same. Because what goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. All truth is parallel. Because Abraham Avinu tested and he passed, it is now the time when God will send his one and only son, Yeshua the Messiah, and offer his son for, a, for the redemption of the sin of the world. Look at that. And the Son of God is our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. That is why the scripture says, my friend, Vayetze Yaakov, Yaakov departed Beersheba, and then Vayelech Harana. When he saw that glorious mystery revealed before him, that he will cross the two worlds, the world above and the world below, that his task is to make the world above and the world below join together by his person. As we are called by God, to bring the lost souls according to the ways of Hashem, according to the instructions of Hashem for us through the Torah Hedusha. We are mandated by God to make disciples, make Talmudim to all the nations of the world, teaching the Talmudim everything what God has commanded us to do. And the commandments are all found in the Torah Kedusha. That we may observe everything that what God has commanded through Yeshua the Messiah. And he said, lo and behold, I will be with you. 
until the end of time. My dear friends, as I draw to a close, that ladder or that sulam or that only one and only joiner, if I may say, of heavens and the earth is no one but our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. I will close using scripture in Yohanan chapter 10, verse 1. Yeshua the Messiah said this, Yes, indeed, I tell you, the person who doesn't enter the ship fence through the door, but climbs in other way, is a thief or a robber. But the one who goes in through the gate is the ship's own shepherd. This is the one that the ship keeper admits and the ship hears his voice. He calls his own ship, each one by name and leads them out. Verse four of John chapter, 20, chapter 10, after taking out all that are his own, he goes on ahead and his sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because the stranger's voice are unfamiliar to them. Verse six, Yeshua used this indirect manner of speaking with them, but they didn't understand what he was talking to them about. So Yeshua, verse seven said to them, yes, indeed, I tell you that I am the gate for the sheep. I'll pause for a while. What did Yaakov Avinu see in that dream about the ladder or the sulam? He saw the gate of heaven. He saw the gate of heaven. And God the Father standing before him. And here we see the scripture claimed by our Lord and Savior Yeshua saying, yes, indeed, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All those who come before me have been thieves and robbers. But the ship didn't listen to them. Verse 9, I am the gate. If someone enters through me, if someone enters through me, says Yeshua, the Messiah, he will be safe and will go in and out. He will go in and out. What is the ladder for? Why do you use a ladder? You don't use a ladder to sit down. You don't use a ladder to, to lie down. You use a ladder to go up and down, up and down, right? This is what Yeshua says. He will be safe and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life, life in its fullest measure. And my final quotation from scripture is in Yochanan chapter 14, verse six. And I'm sure all of you, all of you knows it by heart. Yeshua the Messiah says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My dear friends, may you have a very sweet Shabbat Shalom. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov bless you. May you, save, may you receive this bracha, these blessings. May your whole family receive that perfect Shalom 
And may you come to know more and more of the Lord of Lords, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, who is no one but our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. If you are suffering from any kind of sickness, if you are encountering of any kind of trials or testing, I pray in the name of the Lord Yeshua the Messiah, that God will bless you according to his riches and glory through Messiah Yeshua. Only believe, have trust and faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Shalom, my friend. Amen, amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom everyone. If you had been blessed with a video teaching, I just simply humbly request you to share and share and share and share the video teachings. Share it and tell your friends from the nations of the world to please do subscribe to my channel so that they may all receive notification for future video teachings for the glory of Hashem, our Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. And if, and only if you are blessed, and you would like to partner with this ministry, here we are in the Far East Asia, Philippines. And you would like to, to share your blessing, if, and only if, it's between you and God. You may send your offering or your tithes and offerings. I said that because tithes and offerings are holy possession of God. It doesn't belong to any one of us. It belongs to God. If we don't give to God what belongs to him, the holy tithes and offering, then we are stealing from God. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 says, You have robbed me. And the people of God said, Where have we, where have we robbed you? And God said, From tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse. So God said in verse 10, Bring your tithes into my storehouse that there may be enough room and food in my storehouse. And prove me now, herewith her says Adonai Sabaoth, if I will not pour out from the windows of heaven a blessing, that there's going to be no more room for you to contain it. The very words of Adonai Sabaoth. So that his work will continue on, his work will prosper, especially in this tribulation period that have already started. If you want to, to join in, if you want to be one with the Jewish heart and soul, Messianic Kehila, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Just say it, simply say, Pastor Victor Rodriguez Briones, I want to be one with your Messianic Jewish community, the Jewish heart and soul, Miss Messianic community. I will certainly, without any iota of double mindedness, I will add you in our community. Baruch Hashem. May you be blessed and may you stay blessed. Shabbat Shalom. Lehitrot. And Shalom. Kol Tov. Ooh. Hallelujah. My friends, dear ones, brethren, continue to be faithful to Hashem. Continue. Because this is the decisive moment where you and I are to be tested. But the moment you are tested like me, 
all the more you rejoice. The Bible is very explicit on that, that we are to count it with all joy when we fall in different kinds of testing, because to those who pass the test, him will God give the crown of life and to those who stay faithful to him. Even today, as I speak, we receive these connections, these connections from our miracle, from our water. December 3, hallelujah. Baruch Hashem. Walang mapaglalagyan ang takot o pag-aalinlangan sa akin. Sorry na lang si Hasatan. My God is able. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly all that I ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. On your end, continue to be faithful because no one can outgive Hashem, our God. Receive the benediction that comes from Hashem. Yivarecha Adonai, vayishmarecha, Ya'er Adonai, Panav Elecha, Vikunecha, Yisa Adonai, Panav Elecha, Ve'yasem Lecha Shalom. May Adonai bless you and may Adonai keep you. May Adonai's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Adonai lift up his countenance toward you and give you his shalom. Hashem. Yeshua HaMashiach Adoneinu. Amen. 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 Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Share and share and share and share the video teaching. Don't stop sharing. And continually be faithful and overcomers before the Shekinah, the presence of Hashem. Pray for us continually as I always bless you with prayers. Alam nyo ba? Alam nyo ba si Lavan? June? Hi. Alam ba si Lavan? Bago sila nakipaghiwalay ni Yaakov, ano ginawa ni Lavan? Pinless niya ang kanyang ang kanyang mga anak, pinless niya ang kanyang mga apo. Yung isang Russia sa pagkatao ni Lavan. Russia means wicked man. Marunong mag-bless. Pinless niya yung kanyang mga anak at yung mga apo. Alam niyo pag may nagsabing Shabbat Shalom na blessing sa inyo, sabihin niyo, Amen! Take it! Receive it! Lalo na kapag magulang ninyo ang nagbibless sa inyo dahil yun ang nagbibless ng may lubos na pag-ibig. Magulang ninyo sa laman o magulang ninyo sa pananampalataya. Whenever somebody gives you a bracha, a blessing, receive it. Say amen to it. Got it. Sabi mo, I got it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Receive it. Shabbat shalom. And everybody said, Amen, Amen to that. Amen. Amen. Leitraot. Kultuf. Leitraot. Kultuf. Amen, Cain. Yehiratson.